Legend of Total War here, and today I'm going to do a bit of an early game guide for Clan Scryer with the express purpose of taking out Morgor on turn 2. So you should be able to replicate this regardless of what difficulty that you play on. Whether it be easy to legendary difficulty, you should be able to follow this guide if you want to. So this morning I woke up to a notification on Twitter. Somebody had linked to me a Reddit post, which I'll just share now, and I will link it in the description. Every early game with Clan Scryer. It's just a Star Wars Episode Eight meme. You know, I want all guns firing on that man. Ikaclaw basically trying to shoot Morgo. Now, Morgo naturally has 75% uh, missile resistance, but usually 85% because he can get an additional 10% of his skill tree very early on. So basically trying to shoot at Morgo is pointless because he also regenerates as well. Hence the meme. So a few people have trouble dealing with Morgor in the early stages of the campaign. Now, one of the easiest ways of dealing with Morgor is actually not dealing with Morgor, because he doesn't start off at war with you. He stays around this area here. If you move fairly quickly, you can actually take the entirety of the Estalia province before he has locked it down, before he's, he's like blown up these settlements. But you do need to be very aggressive in doing that. So what I'm going to show you here is a very easy way to take him out so that he can't put down his right of ruination and prevent you from occupying these settlements. But it will require you then afterwards to basically deal with all of Estalia. Now, the reason why we've got to take him out on turn two, and it's only really available on turn two, is because he'll be sitting in his herdstone there at his weakest point. Outside of that, even if you ambush him, he's going to be a lot more difficult because he's able to recruit a lot faster than us and he's able to recruit a lot better units than us. And we're not able to get access to our rattling guns and gazelles to destroy his army utterly really quickly. Not until much later on. Not much later on, but, you know, a fair bit. On, uh, uh, you know, we've got to get to this one here, which is lots of cheesy ways of getting that done quickly, but it's not required for this particular guide here. So what we want to do is take Ikaclaw, launch the attack here. But Legend, how are you going to get there on turn 2 now? Trust me. And we want to fight this battle and take zero casualties. Okay, this battle is really easy to do for zero casualties. Even if you play an easy battle difficulty, you will still take casualties on the order resolve there. Now, another thing is that it doesn't matter one bit how much damage Ikaclaw takes as long as he doesn't actually get wounded in the battle. And you'll see why soon. So send him in. Start doing your thing. When using Warp Lightning, especially on very hard battle difficulty, make sure that you're shooting at a target that isn't going to dodge it. So something that's already shooting or already in combat is ideal. So draw them in so the rattling guns can shoot them as well. This guy's coming in. Okay, I'm going to pop this down when they get into a bit of a blob. We'll try to slow guys down on the flanks that are maybe getting a little bit close to our other troops. We absolutely do not need to use the nuke in this guide at all, but you can if you really want to. one over here. If I pop that down in front of them, they might run back. Yeah. Just buys more time to shoot them. Sometimes you can use that spell to actually stop them from progressing just a little bit. Even if they're dodging it, again, use it to your advantage. Predictable AI behavior, because they're programmed to do certain things that are you know, in certain situations. There we go. Easy. Barely even any damage on Ikaclaw either. Alright, and we have to sack it. That's really important. If you occupy this settlement, you are not going to be able to attack Morgor on turn 2. Then, we want to put a point into Root Marcher, and then Force March as far over here as we possibly can. Cool. Now, this guy's going to provide an extra 10% campaign movement range as of the next turn. They don't apply that extra movement as soon as they're attached into the army. Now, the next thing that we want to do here is actually respec Ikaclaw. Alright, take this off him. Respec Ikaclaw. And this is where I'm probably going to get a bit of people going, What the hell? What's he doing this for? 
And then what you want to do is just attach in just any lord, preferably a cheap one. But if you want to get some some Warlock Masters, this is an opportunity to do so. So that's what I'm going to do here. So let's grab Warpstone Hoarder, which doesn't apply to any of our units here, but I'm just going to grab it anyway. Okay, and just leave them there in Force March. Now, over here, if you've only got one settlement, you're thinking to yourself, oh, I want to push this up to Tier 3. Just got to keep in mind that you can't Ruin Dwell and push units up to any tier other than one if you've got no territory. So if you wanted to push this up to tier three, you have to occupy another settlement first. So my recommendation, I, I don't really ever recommend doing the tier three Skaven Blight Cheese. I think it's kind of crap. If you're going to push it up to any tier, do it to tier five. So we've got to wait until you've got 120 food. But I don't really recommend doing it because growing these settlements naturally is not really that time consuming or costly. So just something to note there. Uh, I usually do like to recruit another army here to go and take Tabaro next turn, or sack it, depending on what this guy here does. So there's lots of different things that he can do, but one thing that he will never do is block our path to Montanus. He'll never stand here. He might stay in this settlement here and keep recruiting. He might run over to this way. He might run over to that way. Lots of different things that he'll do. But if you're at full strength here, he'll never attack you, and he'll never block your path here. At least in the loads of times that I've tried it out. Also... You don't have to do it until the very last seconds, but we do eventually need to get onboard waste compactor. That is very important. That gives us effectively unlimited ammunition with the um, with the rattling guns. All right? There's no point doing any diplomacy. No one's going to do anything with us, so just end the turn. Now, one of the main reasons that we want to uh, ruin uh, what's it called um, respec Ica claw on turn one as opposed to turn two or beyond is, for one thing, Ikat Claw is not able to reach Montenas on turn two. You just can't do it with him. So by respecting him on turn one, that allows us to get him back. What's happening here? Corruption. High Chaos Corruption. What? There's no Chaos Corruption in the province. That's weird. Anyway. Yeah, so he... He can't make it there, and we do that so that he'll be available on turn 4, as opposed to turn 5, or, or, or later than that. Okay, now, next thing, as we've seen, he has not blocked the path. We can make it to here. So weird, there's, there's no Chaos Corruption here. I refuse. Okay, and then, Force March, right up to here. There's a specific point right there. Right next to the settlement. Don't declare war on... Morgor, until you've reached that point right there. Now, you'll notice that we can't actually launch the attack. But if you tag out a Lord, what ends up happening, right? This guy has effectively used up 150% of his movement. But when we tag out a Lord, right, their movement is set to zero. Just set to zero. They're not at negative 50. They're at complete zero. So it doesn't really matter what Lord you choose, but it probably would be best to use a Warlock Master because... That will help you get more warp fuel. Now, because this guy here is essentially on zero movement, you can actually switch him back to Stalking Stance. And you don't actually need any movements in order to attack someone that's standing right next to you. So now we'll actually pop that in. Why not? No big deal. And so now we have the opportunity to attack Morgur and launch the attack. Now, you'll look at this and be like, Oh my god, it's a decisive defeat. This looks really difficult. This is where it was really important to attack them at a herdstone because of the AI behavior here. Because as of the next turn, right? I'll just explain what will happen. As of the next turn, it's difficult to catch Morgur inside of here. And because he's got vastly better units than you, even if you ambush him, he's probably not just going to run away. And it'll be difficult to deal with, unless you bring an overwhelming amount of force. And again, that's very expensive. Like I said, there are certainly other ways of dealing with Morgur, and you absolutely don't need to do this. But this is, as far as I'm aware, the quickest way to get rid of him. But yeah, on turn three, he'll go blow up Bill Bali, all this settlement, and he'll be in, in camp stance. You just won't be able to find him. This way, he's stuck in there. He can't do anything. He can't evade you, and if you occupy this, it completely eliminates him. So let's jump in here, and I'll show how to win this battle, which I'm sure many of you guys have sort of figured out by this point. Funnily enough, the easiest way to deal with the Beastmen is to actually attack them when they're in their herdstones, because they don't just 
charge right at you, regardless of what the balance of power difference is. They just won't come at you. So what we want to do here is just keep all of our units in reserve, including the Gisales, because we want to preserve our balance power as much as possible. Morgur is not unbreakable, so if we inflict the army losses on him, he will rout. And because he has nowhere left to go, it's just game over for him. So we get rid of him by not having to deal with him. So what we want to do here is use our Lord, because I think what most people would do in this situation here is in two turns, they would put Ikiklaw back in charge of this army. Obviously, he won't be getting the experience for it. There's Morgor over there, but he's not hes not a huge concern. We need to make sure we put our Lord up front so that if anything's charging at us, that they don't reach the rattling guns. So they put in a Herdstone ability that's causing us to be a bit tired. Not a big deal, though. That's it. So there's some... Okay, here we go. We, usually, Morgur stands over here. The fact that he's here right now is actually very unusual, but it's not that bad. So if you ever look at him, he is at 75% missile resistance. But that doesn't mean he's completely immune to missiles. So those guys... They're just going to do that. No big deal. Can move around over the side then. Now, other things to note. If you play on specific timers... You should be fine unless you play on 20 minutes because if you play on a 20 minute timer you're probably not going to dish out enough damage to make this worth it in time and you should use your Gisales if you are going to attempt it if you play on a 40 minute timer it should be fine if you play on a 60 minute timer you might still be able to win the battle now if the timer runs out what will end up happening is that it'll be a draw you just won't get the victory but you won't be defeated either and if that happens, you'll still remain sieging the settlement. So Morgor will get no replenishment, no recruitment done. But if you dish out enough damage, he won't sally out against you. That's the most important thing there. You have to make sure you dish out enough damage. Obviously, if you're playing on unlimited timer, which is what we're doing here, which is what I always play on, uh, you could just do whatever you want. So I always use the magic to try to get rid of their archers, because that's the main thing that's going to be a threat, I think, to the uh, to this guy. While we do have higher range than them, if they move in a bit closer, they can dish out a fair bit of damage. They're not doing very much to us. Plus, there's a little bit of a line of sight issue here because it's a, like a bumpy terrain. Remember, they can't just shoot through the ground. You can use your nuke if you absolutely want to. Also, try to keep your two rattling guns not standing right next to each other, if possible. That is ideal. Okay, that's it. Lure them in. Yeah, if anything particularly fast is coming this way, use your Lord to try to tank it so it doesn't get to your rattling guns. Because he doesn't matter. He's just going to get respect in two turns anyway. Keep him pinned down there. And you can use Warp Lightning to dish out a fair bit of damage to them. And if this guy starts to get too badly damaged, then use your, your hero. But they don't have that many of these kinds of units, so you don't have to worry too much. Cool. Also, there's a possibility, very low chance of it, that you might get a potion of healing at the, at the very first battle. If that's the case, that gives you a bit of extra wiggle room. Obviously, we did get a channeling star, not channeling star, uh, forbidden rod. So that gives us the ability to... I didn't equip it. Uh, the Generate some more Winds of Magic, but I don't think extra Winds of Magic is worth the damage that it causes our guys. So I've already taken out their Razor Gore units. The Chaos Spawn have to be taken out, but Morgor doesn't. Okay, so they've got a unit of archers over here. It's the same one from before. Yep. And you just take your time. Like I said, anyone can do this. It is not difficult whatsoever. But yeah, I imagine there'll be quite a few people that are vomiting in their mouth, being like, Ugh, this is so cheesy, I will never do this. I am play a Skaven, but I'm honorable. And that's totally fine. This is not going to be for everyone. But if you play a Clan Scry campaign, you're like, man, I just fucking hate Morgan, he ruins my campaign. Maybe give this a shot. It might make your campaign more enjoyable just to get rid of him straight away. Because at the end of the day, using a Warlock Engineer to get a, a whole lot of levels by doing this isn't going to be all that bad because you need to get one of them to level 15 anyway. 
Okay, so these guys are starting to get a little bit low on ammo. You don't want them to be completely depleted before an attack wave comes at you. Because if they run out and there's something fast coming at you, that could be a problem. So what we do in that case is just take a break every now and again. Just come back over here, take a break. They will never come out and attack us, no matter what. So just stand back over here. And, you know, just wait. They're not going to do anything. So what we can do here is just, like, just pause it for, I don't know, five minutes. Let them regenerate their ammo a bit. Okay, so it's been about five minutes, you know, on this, which actually makes it more like two minutes, no big deal. Um, you can take breaks throughout your battle. Just go do something else. Like I said, they didn't make any moves whatsoever. Now, we've got a little bit of an issue here in that one of our units has more ammo than the other. Typically, it would be good if they're both having the same amount because they stop regenerating their ammo once they're at 80%. So this one here is still regenerating ammo where this one here isn't. So we want to prioritize this one here shooting. Now, another thing that we got to watch out for is this particular terrain here can be a bit bumpy. If you're shooting from this angle, you see there's a bit of ground there that sort of blocks them. So it's actually better to move around this way here so their line of sight isn't blocked. Really important when using any kind of gun unit that you check the line of sight. Okay, you move back, you move forward. Like I guess I want to prioritize that one there shooting and you get back. Okay, this guy here has now taken too much damage. Oh, no, no, he's okay. We can keep him in a little bit longer. We just don't want him to get him, get him killed. Because you can... With your Lord, you can just tag him out at the end of the battle and get a, another Lord for full health. Whereas you can't tag this guy out and get another hero at full health. That's it. Okay, they've evened out the ammunition there. So the units that we really need to watch out for are any of like the archers or the the really fast units. Because if a, a Centigore unit comes in here and charges into your rattling guns, yeah, they're going to kill them. They're going to kill them real quick. So got to be real careful. Make sure you've got your heroes there to block them if you, if you need to. Obviously, you can spend some food for Menace Belows if you absolutely need to, but you don't need to. Sorry, if you want to, not, not if you need to, because you don't need to. So at this point here is where the 20 minute timer players would be about to get a draw. We've dished out plenty of damage. We wouldn't, if you wanted to launch the attack again, I believe you have to back off from the siege, withdraw from the siege and then re-besiege it, which we're completely out of movement. So that is impossible in this case here, which is why you only get this one shot on turn two. This is why I'm saying that if you're going to play it on 20 minute timer, you've really got to make sure that you use up all your ammo and all your magic within this time if you're going to attempt it. Because we have dished out a lot of damage so far. Because you just want to make sure that they are not in a position to sally out yet. Don't shoot at shattered units. Like I said, it's a waste. Probably need to take another break and just let them regenerate ammo. So just go back. No big deal. Just take regular breaks. Make sure these guys here aren't just sitting on the very edge of their ammo. Because uh, that is a good good way to, you know, really get caught. Right, these ones here, just get rid of them real quick. Don't imagine it's a major wave. Yeah, and what we'll do is just, we'll just wait until these guys regenerate some ammo, I guess. Okay, got a little bit more here, so move back in, and let's do this. Really important that our rattling guns don't take damage, and then just take your time. So we're reaching the, starting to get to the point where the 40 minute timer players will be running out of time. You notice they're still playing chaos music. Ooh, 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 ooh. We're back, we're back, we're back. A bit close there. You don't have to play it on three times speed, but... You can oh, shit. Okay, this is a problem, this is a problem. These ones here. This is one of the more dangerous units you'll encounter in this battle, because they can dish out so much damage to you. You can kill them really quick as well, but coming over this hump here, they uh, could get their line of sight blocked. Really important that you use your hero to try to block their advance. Obviously, the suppressing fire makes a big difference. I don't think they're going to get us this time. I think we got them. I think they've got one more of them, though. Not sure. Uh, if that unit shattered... Yeah, if you're playing on a 40-minute timer, wipe it out. Or a 20-minute timer. Okay, but it is still playing Chaos Music. Thing, thing, uh, thing to note. All right. Might be a good idea now to start using this guy instead. This one's getting a little bit close to death. Just inch our 
way over just a little bit at a time because we can't see where a lot of their units are. Just about all of their units stalk. So just a little bit at a time. Real easy. Easy peasy. That's it. Okay. And every now and again, they'll... Okay, okay. Move back, move back. They're coming at us from two different angles. That's not ideal. Move back. Skaven music. That means the balance of power is now in our favor. So if the timer ran out, it was a draw. It is unlikely that they'll actually charge at us. Okay, come on, guys. You need to move back faster. You gotta be really careful over this damn hump here. Just because we're cheesing doesn't mean that it's easy. Okay, hold them back. You need to shoot. You be a backup. Oh, hang on. Yep. Chuck it in there. Okay, no, we're good, we're good. We don't need to send him in there. Okay. Because, yeah, the Ungors can outrun us, but they can outrun us you know, quite quick. Careful with that. Yeah, really keep shooting at those Centigors. I do not want them coming back, ideally. Alright, we did that. Could also use a Warlord for this battle here, but again, the main reason why we've used a... Warlock Engineer is so that there's a chance of getting the um, the, uh, the the juice warp fuel. Okay, now we need some time to regenerate some more ammunition. No big deal. We'll just wait for that to happen. Okay, almost at the 40 minute mark, but the balance of power does seem to be in our favor. Again, if you're using the 40 minute timer, totally feel free to use the warp lock just to you know, dish out as much damage as possible before the draw ends up happening. Because you really don't want them sallying out over the end turn. Okay, stop that. Because while it isn't shattered, it's close though. No, your damage. Move this one over here. So I'll only bring in. I'll only use the warplock Gisele if they bring in a particularly dangerous unit. Because I feel a lot more confident now that you know the balance of power is in our favor. We're definitely going to win as long as we keep this up. Okay, you too, mate. Fire at will. That's it. We just use the heroes to lure them in, and then the rattling guns do the rest. Two rattling guns firing on a single unit will take them out super quick. That was already shattered. No big deal. Could use control with it. It's not difficult enough of a battle. And that's the main thing with this. I wanted to make a guide for people who were not good at the game. Not good at Skaven. You can follow this. It doesn't matter how good you are. If this is the first time you've ever played... Total War Warhammer 3, and you have no idea how to micro, you can replicate this on legendary difficulty. And that's what this guide is really here for. Again, we're going to get a lot of people being like, why would you play that way? No one forces you to play this way. Do whatever you want. I don't, I don't freaking do this in my campaigns. I've known about this kind of stuff for ages. I don't do this. Because I don't need to. I usually, I usually take out Morgul later when I'm ready. I usually go after uh, Tilia first. Or uh, I guess the Vampire Coast. Because honestly, Morgur isn't necessarily a bad neighbor. I mean, yeah, he causes chaos corruption, but it doesn't cause public order problems for you. It just causes attrition. So just don't have your army standing around. And having chaos corruption in your regions isn't that bad because it gets rid of uh, Skaven corruption. And if you've got low Skaven corruption, that means you'll get more food from the area. So, can actually be good to keep Morgur around, but some people want to get rid of him. Understandably so. He is a pain in the ass sometimes. Especially if he does the Rite of Ruination and disables you from being able to occupy the whole province. And I think that's the main pr reason people want to get rid of him. Now, I don't usually have that problem because I'm, us I'm usually uh, taking uh, Magritta on turn two. I usually sack Tabaro, and then occupy to, uh, what's it called, Magritta on turn two, and then I get to Nuja on turn three, and then I've conquered the whole province before he's had a chance to um, to demolish all the territory. And then I just let him have the, the northern part of Estalia. I don't have a problem with that. Okay, are we going to be able to shoot them, or what's going to... Yes, yeah, okay, watch out for that. Target locked. 
Even though I had them on fire at will, they were obstructed, they just couldn't shoot. Okay, now we got rid of the tower. Uh, sorry, the uh, barricade. Shouldn't be a problem, although they might be obstructed from that angle. But while they're shooting, they're not going to dodge this. Oh, that was the last of my magic. That's okay, we can move up while that's going on, I think. There we go, get rid of them. Good, a little bit of damage on them, but no actual casualties. All right, start moving up. We can see that this one here was starting to shoot us a little bit. At this point here, rather than moving towards this direction, move this way. We've taken out all of the Chaos Spawn, so we shouldn't have any unbreakable units left to deal with. But yeah, they'll only leave, like, maybe... 60% of their overall force in this general area. Another thing to keep in mind as well is that as we regenerate our bouncer power, sometimes you can just sit there and then all of a sudden the army losses can trigger. Yeah, use this guy to scout ahead because we can't see them in all directions. You might have to come in here as well. So we just don't know where they are. So You've got to be really cautious. Try not, try not to go into range of their towers. There's probably some guys sitting around over here. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, if there's not, then just cap it. That'll get rid of a couple of barricades. No, nothing wrong with that. Also, if you've got a balance of power bar, you can actually look at that and it'll tell you how many units remain. But obviously, playing on legendary difficulty here, as we are, uh, we don't have that option. Okay, looks like they're moving up this way. That's good. Basically, just wanted them to do something. Okay, this is definitely something worth using the Giselles for. Okay, if you can get his attention. Okay, hang on. Let's get over to here. Morgul will regenerate and has huge amounts of missile resistance, but that... No, sorry. No, 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 no. I don't want to shoot Morgul. I want to shoot the other one. This one here. This one here can't regenerate, so shoot at that. And that's actually more dangerous than Morgul in many ways. And that's also worth a lot of balance of power. So we should be getting fairly close to army losses now. Alright, they just want to keep going back there. Again, I can't see where the rest of their units are. You could send this one ar around here to scout as well. There's no reason why you have to only use them. Alright, you just stay there. The tower's gone for good. Go recap that and see if they'll come back over here. Doesn't look like we're going to win this within the 60 minutes, but you definitely could. Yeah, I was I dicked around a lot. <laughs> yeah, I took breaks, didn't use up all the ammunition on this one. But we've recovered all of our ammo here, but I'm also being quite skittish. I think we're very close to the army losses, though. You definitely can win this within 60 minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. And like I said, even if you don't, um, it'll just be a draw. And you've still effectively beaten him, as long as you keep him under siege. I knew we were close. Oh, look at that, we did it within 60 minutes. There we go. So even if you were on a 60 minute timer, we would have got it. And there you go. Again, I know that a lot of people are going to be revolted by this technique. That's totally fine. There is nothing wrong with being disgusted with this cheese. It's it's pretty gross. <laughs> but, you know, um, turn two. Warhead of the Shadow Gave gone. Estalia is not going to be a problem for you. This sets you up well for the rest of the side of stuff. So it's up to you how you want to go about it. This army here is capable of winning. There's probably an order result if I come down over here. Should be able to win that in order, even on very hard battles of good. Yep, so you can occupy that as well on turn two. I don't think there's an army over here. I think Lupio stayed somewhere in this area. I'm just not entirely sure. It's entirely up to you what you want to do at this point, because things will change beyond each turn. But taking out Morgo, you really shouldn't have any difficult opponents left to worry about. And then again, Ica Claw will come back in two turns. But another thing to keep in mind is that when you've got lords that are higher level than your faction leader, their loyalty will decay over time. So that's another reason why you should probably use a Warlock Master, because they tend to have more loyalty. 
Uh, actually, it's just loyalty for new recruits. It doesn't matter who it is. So Clan Scry is actually fine to do this with. But yeah, get Ikaclaw back in here to fight against Estalia as soon as possible. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this technique, whether or not you'll use it. If you have used it, let me know how well it's been for you and whether or not you want to see other ridiculously dirty, cheesy guides for uh, other campaigns. Like, if there's other enemies that you want eliminated super bloody early using dirty tactics, just let me know and I'll, I'll try to figure out a strat for you. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys. And I'll see you next time. Later.